What it is, everybody. Thanks for tuning in to Dumb Out TV. Make sure you hit that like, comment, and subscribe button for brand new content. I'm your host, Gold Mount Shorty. Let me get straight down to business. Today, we're finna talk about why Cliff, man. We're finna talk about this incident that took place over there at Blaze Magazine, man, out there in the Hit Factory. But uh, we're going to get straight to it, but make sure you hit, hit that cash app, too, man. Mag promo, M-A-G-P-R-O-M-O. -O. Well, let me get straight into it, man. Back in 1998, you know, why Cliff was working with uh, Cannabis, man, they dropped that Can I Bus, and you know what I mean? They turned the album in, you know what I'm saying? And uh, they started doing a little bit of promotion. You know how back in the days, you know, the record companies would pay for promotion and stuff like that for people to have ad placements and stuff in different magazines and shit like that. But around this time, it was like four or five good magazines like Murder Dog, The Source, uh, Double XL, and then you had Blaze Magazine. Now, a lot of people don't remember Blaze Magazine, you know what I'm saying? They ain't talking about Johnny Blaze. It was a magazine called Blaze, and they used to have some good interviews in it, but you know what I'm saying? Eventually, the company folded, you know what I'm saying? They was losing a lot of money every year. And they tried to sell their company for like $200 million, but I don't think that worked out. I don't know who eventually bought it. But yeah, man, Blaze Magazine was a thing in the 90s. All lyrical MCs, hip-hop MCs was trying to get placements in the magazine for like $800, $1,600, $500. You know what I'm saying? And uh, this dude right here, Jesse Washington, he was a journalist, you know what I'm saying? And he used to work for the company, and he had a bad reputation of, like, writing negative reviews on people's uh, albums, you know what I'm saying? And what ended up happening, what I'm going to talk about next, kind of crazy, you know what I'm saying? So everything I'm saying for educational purposes is entertainment only because this dude, Jesse Washington, accused White Cliff John of pulling a gun out on him and threatening to shoot him. You know what I'm saying about a negative interview, I mean a negative review on the album. Because he did the interview, then they did the review on what the uh, music sounds like. And White Cliff had produced the whole album, so yeah, I all had his face on it. And this journalist was sitting up there playing with cannabis, you know what I'm saying, writing all this negative stuff, you know what I'm saying, and you know, why Cliff wasn't having that, man. So they say why Cliff came up in that thing and he had put that Thule on that boy. Because, you know what I'm saying, uh, it was uncalled for, man. You know, a nigga spending money with you, then you're going to write some bullshit and send it to him and tell him, man, check out this review. And then when the man see it, it's fucked all the way up. You know what I'm saying? Because... There was some favoritism going on. You know, Cannabis was beefing with LL Cool J, and Cannabis only sent like eight songs over. So the dude really wanted a whole body of work. So he just gave the man a negative review. And Wild Cliff was like, man, fuck that, man. We finna go up to the studio, and we gonna shake this nigga down and slap him with that too, if he say the wrong thing. And pretty much that's what happened. It scared the life out of that dude. You know what I'm saying? He was scared as hell, man. You know what I'm saying? That nigga skin jumped, nigga body jumped out of skin, man. But Wild Cliff pulled a gun on him, but you know what I'm saying? The dude didn't press charges because it was only a misdemeanor. It's only a misdemeanor to pull a gun on the person and not use it in uh, New York at the time because we're talking about 1998. You know what I'm saying? This same journalist, we're going to talk about him later on. He got his ass whooped a few other times, you know what I'm saying? But we're going to stick on this story, man, because <clears throat> why Cliff John, he wasn't with that bullshit, man. You ain't finna just write no bullshit and think a nigga finna uh, put it out to sell magazines and this cannabis who paying good money, you know what I'm saying? And uh, that just what it was, man. Why Cliff stood on business, he went up in that thing, put that gun to him, and told him, what's up, man, what's up with that negative review? 
and the dude pretty much wrote a ad, an article, in, in that same month issue talking about how why Cliff pulled the gun on him and stuff. You know what I'm saying? Tried to get his readers to uh, not fuck with Why Cliff and Cannabis album. You know what I'm saying? And, that right there kind of fucked them two up, you know what I'm saying? Even though they got Mike Tyson to get in the video, they still put the music out or whatever, but, you know what I'm saying, the album didn't do what it's supposed to do just because niggas like that dude, that journalist, was, you know what I'm saying, putting salt in the game, lying and saying the man album wasn't good. They just wanted 10 LL Cool J diss songs, you know what I'm saying? The man was trying to, Focus on real hip hop, make music, you know what I'm saying? And uh Why Cliff was like, man, I ain't never put a gun on nobody. Everybody know me. I walk around with a good towel. You know what I'm saying? I'm part of the Fugees. We we Fugees, man. We don't get down like that. You know what I'm saying? There wasn't no Jimmy Henchman or nothing going on, no fucking New Jersey real fucking devils running down on you or nothing, bro. It was just a nigga coming up in the studio with they fire on him, seeing what was up. You the one started shaking and trembling and shit because you knew you did something wrong. You know what I'm saying? What type of dude uh, sit up there and interview a dude all day long, eight, nine hours, then go uh, put the article out and then do a negative review and then send it to the man before it come out? It's like, what you think about that? Of course they gonna get mad. All the big labels was mad or pissed off about that though. So of course they had to come see. You. But this uh journalist, he ended up getting blackballed pretty much. He worked for ESPN and a couple other uh places that let him write, but dude ain't right, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, he had rumors out on him that, you know, one of his homeboys killed one of the chief dudes that was involved with Blaze Magazine. Like, Blaze Magazine owner, best friend, son got killed by uh, Jesse Washington, homeboy, who was later acquitted. You know what I'm saying? And Jesse Washington gave the man a job off in Blaze uh, Magazine offices for $8 a month, uh, $8 an hour. So, you know what I'm saying? They had to fire that dude. They're like, man, what the fuck you doing bringing this dude up in here and he killed my best friend's son and you got him working in here, you know what I'm saying, doing a little janitory work and stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? So that dude wasn't right, man. He was playing both sides with the Blaze Magazine owner. He was playing both sides with people that was spending their ad money, man. He thought he could just move around to say what he want to say. So why Cliff had to pull up on him and handle his business. But uh, I don't think nothing came up out of it because the dude said he wasn't going to press charges or whatever. He just wanted to let everybody know what took place. You know what I'm saying? But we've been hearing about a lot of journalists getting their ass whooped. You know what I'm saying? For just writing some bullshit. Like how these niggas got these Twitter fans and shit like that. But niggas didn't know. Back in the days, why Cliff used to do house calls and pull up at niggas' studios, hit factory, wherever, nigga, Quad City, uh, Quad Studios, wherever, nigga, and just go in that bitch with that fire, nigga, with them New Jersey niggas and them Haitians and shit, and they go in that bitch looking for whoever in the office or whoever owed them some money. They come in that bitch and, you know, how they went, take what they, what they owed, man. And this clown right here, you know, back then, the labels used to pay good money for people to be in Blaze magazine, even though Blaze wasn't even the top magazine. They will be in like four, five, six magazines. And that was the one for the uh, East Coast region, pretty much. Like a lot of people out in Massachusetts uh, and motherfucking uh, New Jersey, New York, uh, New Hampshire and shit, they was buying the Blaze magazine. You know what I'm saying? Blaze magazine fell off real bad after that. But peace, I'm out.